They threw a party in Memphis late in 1988. A party that stands for patriotism and competition. Pride in your country, your state, and in your city. A week-long celebration featuring flags waving and fans cheering. Rodeo and wrestling. Memphis blues and birthday tunes. Indiana University was there, as were the Gamecocks of South Carolina, the people of Memphis, and an international television audience. They called it the 1988 Liberty Bowl Festival, and what a party it was. From Hoosiers to Gamecocks, from new guests to old friends, they paid tribute to this annual pageant of national pride, and together celebrated 30 years of liberty. Liberty Bowl Classic is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis and by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association. It began as a dream 30 years ago. Ambrose Bud Dudley dreamt of combining his love of collegiate football with his love of country. His dream turned into reality when the first annual Liberty Bowl kicked off on December 19, 1959. Today, it is seen as much more than just another bowl game. It has become a nationwide celebration of pride and patriotism. From its early days in Philadelphia to the decades of success here in Memphis, the story of the Liberty Bowl is in many ways a tribute to its founder, Bud Dudley. The Liberty Bowl has been like a baby. Uh, uh, we've uh, seen, the, we've had a lot of highs, a lot of lows, and uh, every year poses new and, and different problems. Uh, going back in history, of course, we were fortunate in having Penn State against Alabama. This was Bear Bryant's uh, first bowl game in Alabama. Of course, we were, as history points out, he started his bowl career with us and ended his bowl career with us. But uh, we were fortunate in the early days probably to have the first time that the Heisman Trophy uh, winner came to the Liberty Bowl. Uh, Ernie Davis, the late Ernie Davis of Syracuse, played his last game in the Liberty Bowl. And uh, Terry Baker of Oregon State was back-to-back. And of course, Ter Terry Baker against Villanova created a record that still stands. Uh, his run against Villanova was 99 yards, which is still a bowl record. Terry Baker's touchdown run would be among the many memorable events in Liberty Bowl history. In 1964, at Atlantic City's Convention Hall, the Liberty Bowl would be the first ever college bowl game to be played indoors. This bowl has entertained nearly every major college football program in the country. But without a doubt, the game most people put at the top of their list is the 1982 Liberty Bowl, Illinois versus Alabama. Well, unquestionably, the greatest game was Bear Bryant's first game. Uh, he uh, was not feeling well, uh, and uh, he uh, really uh, came here rather sick. He left most of the coaching up to his uh, assistants. Uh, he, uh, I think uh, it was justifiable that he won the game. It, it worked out good. Uh, a week later, we traveled together out to California where he received the Alonzo Stagg Award. And then I guess maybe about two weeks after that, uh, we were all shocked by the, his demise. And uh, we miss him. He was a, a very unusual person uh, and a great, uh, you know, a great attribute to the game of college football. The year 1965 was also pivotal in Liberty Bowl history. For that was the year when the game would find a new city to call home. I was invited then by five cities. There was Tampa, Florida, Birmingham, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia, Memphis, Tennessee, and Phoenix, Arizona. All asked me if I would to bring the bowl, the Liberty Bowl, to one of those five cities. None of them had bowls at that time. I came to Memphis and met some of the nicest people I've ever met, and uh, the net result was I never got to the other four cities. The hospitality of a great city and the pageantry of college football have come together now for 30 years in the annual Liberty Bowl celebration. Invitations to the 1988 Liberty Bowl party were accepted by two of our country's finest institutions, the University of South Carolina 
and Indiana University. Under head coach Bill Mallory, Indiana has established itself as one of the fastest rising football programs in the nation. And this year's 7-3-1 record reflected their rapid climb to the top of the Big Ten. In Indiana, the year was 1988 A.T. A.T. for Anthony Thompson, the All-American tailback who personally scored more touchdowns on the ground than eight other entire Big Ten teams. Joining Thompson in the backfield was quarterback David Schnell and fullback Cal Miller, both keys to a Hoosier offense which averaged over 420 yards per game. Head coach Joe Morrison's Gamecock team began the season 6-0, mainly on the strength of their Heisman Trophy candidate, Todd Ellis. Ellis, who in just three seasons has already thrown for more than 8,000 yards, put together some great performances early in the season, before falling to the interception infection. He ended the year throwing 18 interceptions, and his performance would be an important factor for the Gamecocks in this game as well. So, with two 1989 Heisman hopefuls on the guest list, along with two of the nation's top collegiate coaches, the 30th annual Liberty Bowl was ready to treat the city of Memphis to another exciting football festival. The Liberty Bowl Black Tie Gala, just one of the yearly events that are part of this week-long holiday party. This year's agenda ranged from this sparkling reception to the first ever Liberty Bowl Rodeo, where both teams had the opportunity to witness a different brand of athlete compete against a different breed of opponent. This year's luncheon hosted over 2,000 Memphians, as well as both the Indiana and South Carolina teams, coaches, and families. Players had the chance to meet some of their hosts before paying tribute to the day's honored guests. This year, the Academic Achievement Award, presented by CFA President Chuck Ninus, went to the University of Notre Dame Athletic Department, whose athletes compiled a graduation rate of 100%, the first perfect record in the history of the award. All of us have our own set of talents. To play football in a competitive environment today requires a lot of time and energy and sometimes nagging injuries. But I'd like to think that every school, in terms of its own mission, could aspire to see its student athletes graduate at the kind of rates that we are celebrating today. So thank you very much for honoring us, and I look forward to the day when we can simply presuppose that this kind of thing would be deserved by every program in the country. Thank you very much. The day's highest honor went to sportscaster Lindsey Nelson, recipient of the 1988 Distinguished Service Award. College football coaches, of course, are called upon to get through some rough spots. They need a special philosophy to see them through. I visited Bob Zupke once in the company with Red Grange. Zupke had been Grange's coach at Illinois. And Zup said to Red, take Lindsey in there and show him my den. Just inside the door was a framed copy of Kipling's If. Bob Nealon of the University of Tennessee was the head coach when I was there. The only poem I ever heard him quote was If, because it was something that contains enough philosophy to see you through a great many hard times. And with your permission, I'll use that in closing. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, yet make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired of waiting, are being lied about not dealing lies, are being hated not give way to hating, and yet don't look too good and talk too wise, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or see the things you gave your life to broken, then stoop and build them up with worn-out tools. 
If you can make one pile of all your winnings and risk it on one turn, a pitch and toss, and lose, and start again from your beginnings, never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and there is nothing left within you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foe nor loving friend can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds full of distance run, yours is the world and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Thank you. Good food, good spirit, and good people. All are necessary ingredients to a good party. And all are served up in abundance at the annual Liberty Bowl pregame buffet. With game time drawing closer and closer, school spirit took over the crowd in the Mid-South Coliseum. Marguerite Piazza then kicked off the festivities inside the stadium with an emotional rendition of our national anthem. It was kickoff time at the 1988 Liberty Bowl, and the fired up crowd was ready. Both squads were looking to grab the game's early momentum, and when Gamecock return specialist Robert Brooks took the opening kickoff all the way out to the 46 yard line, South Carolina seemed to be sitting pretty. Indiana coach Bill Mallory knew his team had to hold here. It was so important not to let Todd Ellis and the Gamecocks get things going early. His Hoosiers responded. The 43-yard run back would be the longest drive South Carolina would mount in the entire first half. On their first two plays from scrimmage, South Carolina lost 19 yards. Indiana simply put a cage over these Gamecocks and would not give up the key. With the Indiana defense igniting the blaze, the Hoosier offense began to burn. Anthony Thompson took his first pitch of the night and raced downfield for 48 yards. The Big Ten player of the year carried the ball four more times in this drive. The fourth time put A.T. in the end zone and six points on the scoreboard. The befuddled Gamecocks could do no better in the second quarter than they did in the first. In fact, they did worse. The Indiana defense forced three turnovers on three consecutive possessions. The first coming on a well-timed leap by quarterback Eric Coleman. Next, Chris McCoy stripped Robert Brooks of the ball. And number 42, Andre Hall, came down with a rebound. Hall struck again with a spectacular diving catch of a poorly thrown Todd Ellis pass. South Carolina just could not put together Indiana's defensive puzzle, and the Hoosiers were taking full advantage of their good fortune. The three turnovers turned into 10 points for the Big Red. Quarterback David Schnell passed for almost 200 yards in the first half alone.
A nifty sidearm completion to fullback Cal Miller chalked up six more points for Indiana. Then, with only 30 seconds to go in the half, Pete Stojanovic hit a 28-yard field goal, and the Hoosiers held an intimidating 17 to nothing lead at the half. Over the years, halftimes at the Liberty Bowl have become a special event unto themselves. And this year's show is no exception. Country singer Gary Morris hosted a huge Liberty Bowl birthday party, featuring 30 years of American music. It's our 30th birthday. in order to really become successful. And here we are tonight. After one year, Atlantic City's Convention Hall, Liberty Bowl founder looked to the sunny south for a new place to call home. And sure enough, in 1965, they found it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. Yes, sir. Memphis, resting on the banks of the Mississippi, birthplace of the blues and the home of the king. The city, the Liberty Bowl, was proud to claim as home. Long distance information, give me Memphis, Tennessee. Help me find the party, I tried to get in touch with me. She could not leave her number, but I know who placed the call. Mississippi in the 70s, the Liberty Bowl came to offer more than just great football. It became a celebration of our all-American spirit, of our pride and patriotism. As America celebrated its 200th birthday in 1976, the Liberty Bowl celebrated its traditions by becoming one of the top sporting events in America. To last you out So bring your good times And your laughter too We gon' celebrate Your party with you Come on now It's time to come together It's up to you What's your pleasure Everyone around the world Come on Celebrate good times Come on It's a celebration Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. So here we are in 1988, celebrating our past and looking forward to an even brighter future. The Liberty Bowl is proud of its 30-year heritage of exciting football, outstanding sportsmanship, and stirring pageantry. 
Without a doubt, the Liberty Bowl is America at her best. Goosebumps from the halftime pageant continued into the second half of gridiron action. With Indiana up by 17 points, South Carolina had to make something happen, and make it happen now. After holding Indiana on their first possession, several Gamecocks decided to take matters into their own hands. And here they come. Low snap, and it is blocked. Picked up by South Carolina. You knew they were going to come after this kick. Blocked by both Antonio Walker and Ren Sharperson. Picked up by Mike Tolbert, and away he went. Boy, and this is the kind of spur that you need to spur your team on. Go! 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 The touchdown put South Carolina within reach of the Hoosiers. Hard hits, determined effort, and great plays on both sides then highlighted an action-packed third period. Teams traded field goals, and with the score 20 to 10 heading into the fourth period, Indiana was looking to put South Carolina away for good. On the very first play of the fourth period, quarterback David Schnell delivered the knockout punch. A Liberty Bowl record 88-yard touchdown bomb to wide receiver Rob Turner, which left the Gamecocks reeling.
The final blow came two minutes later when free safety Brian DeWitts intercepted another Todd Ellis aerial and handed the ball over to teammates Schnell, Thompson, Turner, and company. With the ball back in good hands, Schnell promptly delivered it through the air to Turner, this time for a gain of 31. After that, it was all A.T., who deposited the ball in the end zone for his second TD of the game. The touchdown boosted Indiana's lead to 34 to 10, a lead which the Gamecocks found insurmountable in the final minutes of the game. and Bill Mallory. It was their first bowl win in three attempts and was capped off with Hoosier quarterback David Schnell winning most valuable player honors in this 30th edition of the Liberty Bowl Classic. For 30 years, the Liberty Bowl has played host to some of the greatest teams, coaches, and players in college football history. Its record is one of legends and tradition but also one of great vision. The future that lies ahead for this bowl and the city of Memphis is as bright and as bold as the game's namesake, Lady Liberty. And in 1988, Memphis took time out to throw a party honoring 30 years of liberty. Liberty Bowl Classic is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis and by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association. <laughs>